Hey guys, this is Alex from a &R Design, and it's back for round three. This is the uh, SR15 CQB 11.5 upper that I put on a silencer co lower, and we did a couple suppressor reviews with it. We did the SIG SLX 556C, we did the Hux Works, uh, but now for the final flow through, we did get our hands on. <laughs> <laughs> on the nights. Uh, hold on a second. I gotta pull my phone out and remember the acronym for this uh, this bad Larry. This is the 556 QDC slash CRS dash PRT. So this is the, the new cans from Knights. It's a higher flow can. It's got some vents at the front around the end cap. It goes on really nice with the three prong flash hider with the ball bearings that lock into place. The fitment is unbelievable. The collar sits, gosh, two millimeters from the handguard, so it looks good. And it's got your, your waffle pattern on the body. So this is a higher flow can from Knights. It's not that quiet and it's really heavy. It's 19.2 ounces. So it's a, it's a thick boy, it's dense. And uh, we're gonna put some rounds through it kind of pay attention to how the gun operates, how it feels, and we'll splice in some footage from the previous two suppressor videos we shot on this platform, comparing some of the sounds and gassing that we got from the other two cans, the SIG SLX 556C, which is a super high flow compact can, the Huxworks 556K, which is also a compact high flow can that did sound like a silencer, compared to the SIG, and I believe this Knights are more like a sound reduction device and a flash reduction device. But this is a hard use can. This is probably the hardest use can potentially of the three. I know that the locking mechanism and how it, it locks onto the muzzle device is pretty bomb proof. So for a hard use can, guarantee this one comes in at number one. But yeah, we'll put some rounds through it and I'll give you my opinion on this thick, and juicy suppressor that costs way too much money. It's fucking expensive. All right. tell you right now it's not quiet it does not sound like a silencer it's actually quite loud felt recoil does kind of have a little oomph to it so it feels a little bit stiffer shooting than like the flux or the the hux or the uh sig i know for a fact this is a harder use can i know that it, it beats the hux up and down on reliability like this is a true you don't need to service this can can kind of can that was the one thing that i was a little bit worried about the hux is you're supposed to soak your can every thousand rounds in clp and Breakthrough Clean makes a really nice suppressor cleaning kit where you drop your suppressor in, fill it with the solvent, let it sit overnight, and uh, Hux, rec Hux recommends that. I don't wanna do that. A thousand rounds? Dude, we could burn a thousand rounds every day out here. Not getting locked back, so it could be because my gun's super dirty and it's slowing it down. It could be that this is high flow enough of a suppressor where it's, you know, actually pulling that much out of it. God, I haven't cleaned that gun in a long time. Lock back on a CZ Bren 556 mag. I have a Centurion bolt carrier group with a sand cutter with the Knight's bolt in there because I don't have a Knight's armament sand cutter. They're a $256 MSRP bolt carrier group that is gray marketing for $1,200. So we'll go with Centurion. You know, getting a little cook off on the barrel, just getting it super hot. 
The can itself's nice, man. I'm not getting a ton of blowback in the receiver. It's definitely a higher flow can than the Hux, I would say. Hux, I did have a little bit of stuff coming out the receiver. Hux sounds quieter, though. This sounds like a rifle. Get that proprietary Knight's gas system. It'll pretty much always run. I really wanted the can to go with the upper and I, and I don't think they're gonna be selling these 11.5 uh, uppers anymore. I think they're gonna be moving that KS-1, which is their new rifle they did for the UK. Uh, this can's too hot to touch, but I think we're in good shape. Nothing's moving. I don't think anything's loosening up. You know, we're not gonna review this gun. We've reviewed this gun twice already. It's the same gun, just a different suppressor. This was gonna be a quick and dirty anyway. I wasn't gonna burn a million rounds through it. Um, it's screaming hot right now. Uh, you see the end cap? You can see all the, the flow through perforations on the front of the end cap. So it is moving a ton of gas downrange. I'm not getting much in my face at all. It's not really gassy. It's doing exactly what's advertised. And the seal on their gas tube, the seal on their can, and the flow through, other than it being loud, because it's like, that's the new trend in suppressors is flow through. Like the SIG SLX556C is a loud can. It is almost not a suppressor. It does a great job pulling gas away from the operating system, away from the shooter, and downrange. The way like military goes, <laughs> everything is cyclical. You know, dudes will up armor, armor will get heavier, body armor will get heavier, more armor to protect them from IEDs and other things. Then they're in mountainous regions and then the armor requirements start to get lighter, lighter, lighter. So we're Right now on the military side of things, like armor is light but good at stopping stuff, so it's really forced armor technology to develop. But in terms of suppressors, having something scary quiet versus something that protects the operator, it's kind of how you want to toss it up. Like the requirement in the US is we need suppressors to get gas away from the operators because of long-term health issues and also having a sustainable long-term military. Paying attention to TBI, paying attention to the health of the end users so that the government's investment in those operators goes longer. Quiet guns are super awesome. They have a place and then having flow through cans also have a place. I think flow through cans really, really shine on like SPRs and stuff like that, where you could have a super quiet SPR, but it's gonna be really gassy. But then you could also have a flow through SPR that reduces bolt speed and makes it really quick follow-up shots. And the suppressor itself kills the flash completely. So there's no flash. It's quiet enough that you can't really pinpoint where it came from, but you heard it, but you don't know where versus something that's super silent. Um, but this is, I think like, all end users, no matter where on the totem pole of infantry to operator, should have flow through cans because I think it protects the dudes and it also reduces sound signature. But it's not hearing safe. Never think any of these new cans are hearing safe whatsoever. They are just slightly better than an open muzzle device. It's a heavy can, 19 ounces. It's expensive can. These are MSRP $1,800. That's an expensive can. I think the most common question I get asked is, well, what suppressor do you recommend? And my answer is, what are you doing with your gun? Do you want something super quiet? This Knight's gun has no adjustable gas. There is no way to adjust the gas in this gun. But you might want to go with a low flow can, something super quiet that you have adjustable gas up front. You can get the quiet, you can get the soft shooting of the gun, but is it going to be a super reliable hard use gun? Probably not. The second you take that, you could have that gun dialed in and tuned for suppress use only at 73 degrees ambient. And then you take it, you put it in the back of the safe, you lube it up, you take it out on a day like today where it's 22 degrees, that gun's not gonna function. Whereas like this gun is going to function pretty much no matter what can you put on it. It comes down to like, what are you trying to get out of your weapon system and your suppressor? If you're a, a flatland shooter and you just burn it down and do mag dumps at the range, you probably want a flow through suppressor. 
probably want to get all that gas away from you because you're standing at a bench with a bunch of other dudes at the your local gun club and pouring gas down range and not just soaking it in on 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 range get a flow through can if you want to be the cooler neighbor at the range where you have a can that's not super quiet but it's also not you're not blasting your neighbor in the face with a muzzle device and you're not doing a ton of stuff maybe get a flow through can I think flow through cans are awesome. I run them on pretty much all my 5.56s now because I don't care. I want the softest shooter, reliable shooter that I can. And I don't really care about being quiet because if I wanted something super short and super quiet, I would just use a 300 blackout, like a SIG Rattler or MCX LVAW. So again, 5.56, short gun, flow through cans are awesome. Less blowback in your face, less bolt speed increase, and much more comfortable, convenient, and courteous to shoot. But again, they're not quiet, so don't have that expectation out of that suppressor. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment. Um, and I still didn't answer the question on what is the best can. I don't know. I don't know what the best can is. We'll find out. We got a couple more suppressor reviews to do.